In this lesson, we're going to learn how to create heat distortion with the liquefy effect. Okay, so I want to talk to you for just a moment about what heat distortion is and what it looks like. So I have an image for you. Granted, it's not a video, but it's a picture of just kind of how heat distortion creates these waves. Uh, so when something's really hot and it's being captured on film, or even if you're just looking um, across, the image that's on the other side of the heat is going to get these little waves through it. So um, your camera is going to pick that up, and we need to show that in our shot because of how much heat we have coming from this fire. So I'm going to do this using an effect and an adjustment layer. Now the lens flare that we have would not be affected by the heat distortion because the lens flare is going to be coming from our lens and is in front of the fire. So um, our robot's kind of in front of the fire too. So the heat distortion is really going to only affect things that are mostly behind it. So we need to create an adjustment layer that's really only going to affect things behind our robot for the most part. So let's create a new adjustment layer. We'll right click to rename it to heat distortion. And let's position this right beneath the robot. So might need to pull this up so I can see a few more layers at once. Right there, heat distortion. Okay, so this is going to be what we apply that to. And our light uh, that we worked on in the last lesson, I'm also going to pull down here so it's uh, kind of with the tracking pieces and uh, just our, our main layers of images are up here. So let's pull this back down so we can see uh, our heat distortion layer and our comp at the same time. And we need to open up our effects and presets panel. So go ahead and do that through your window option, just right there, effects and presets. And we're going to be using the liquify effect. So go ahead and type that in. There you go. And we'll grab that and drop it onto the heat distortion adjustment layer. Now right away we don't see any changes because we need to affect this with our distortion. So there's a couple of things that we need to set up first. If I drop down my warp tool options, I'm going to turn my brush size up to around 100 or so. So it's a little bit bigger. It's not too big, but it's a little bit bigger to work with. Maybe right in there. That'll be good. And then my brush pressure, I'm going to turn that up all the way to 100 because I want this effect to have its full effect. Now on my view options, I'm going to toggle this down and turn on view mesh. And that's going to allow me to see what will be affected by this heat distortion. Now it looks like my robot's really pretty much just in the way. So I'm going to turn off my lens flare and my robot so we can focus on the area behind him. And I also want to pay attention to only focusing on the area that really has the fire in it. So this area over here would probably have some heat distortion because the smoke is going to be very hot. And this area over here. Now this area becomes much closer to us. So I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to worry about this area down here. So we're going to focus on this upper right hand corner of our shot. Okay. So the, there's a lot of different tools you have with the liquify effect. You have the warp, the turbulence, um, and all of these other pieces. And they all do something a little bit different. We don't have time to go over every single one of them. For us, we're going to be using this turbulence effect. So that's going to be this one right here. Um, and if, you're, if you ever toggle over to your hand tool and After Effects doesn't switch back, you can grab your selection tool and then it'll allow you to grab some of the other tools. It's a kind of a strange little thing that happens sometimes. Um, so I'm middle clicking to kind of pan this around and then it's sticking on that hand tool. So I'll just fix that really quickly and uh, you can also use the space bar to toggle around besides the middle mouse button. So now that I have the turbulence tool selected, I'm going to left click and hold kind of in this corner. And you see how it creates this very turbulent looking distortion of that mesh. So I'm going to kind of move through here and create some distortion all across the top of the shot. And there I was just using the uh, space bar to move that. 
and I'm going to move down a little bit further here and we want to make sure we're affecting all the areas we want to get but not really overstepping that. You can do it a little bit because we will be using a mask to kind of isolate this effect just to make sure we keep it uh, safe from kind of getting some of the other parts of our shot affected that we, that we don't want to have the heat distortion. Okay, so I'm going to move this up and over here and it looks like we probably need to have a slightly smaller brush up here because if you distort this at the top, notice how that mesh pulls this down and we're seeing behind our image, our back plate, and it's just a black background. So I'm going to undo that. We want to make sure we preserve that upper edge. So I'll just come in here and turn the brush size down and then we'll be able to add some distortion to these upper areas without affecting the straightness of that little top line there, okay? And notice also that I'm just left clicking and holding. I'm not going in and uh, actually using the um, the brush strokes on this. I'm not left clicking and dragging. And that's just because sometimes you can get a slightly strange effect from doing that once we begin animating this heat distortion. Because again, we were looking at a still image earlier, but you want to have it animated in your shot at the end. So now it looks like we've got pretty good distortion across the area that we are wanting to have it. And you could maybe do a little bit more here at the bottom. Uh, maybe turn that back up, grab your turbulent, turbulence tool, and kind of do some that's a little bit closer on the ground over here. Just because that heat would extend a little bit out from the fire as well. So it would kind of come towards us a bit. So now we've got that uh, heat distortion. And I want to show you uh, that you have this button called the Distortion Mesh Offset. So if I click this little, uh, basically, crosshairs here, I can begin to move that button around. So if I grab my selection tool, you see that I can start to move where this is being distorted over time. And so simply dragging this a little bit is going to add to the distortion of my shot. So I'm going to kind of move this over to a place uh, where the edge is not being distorted all that much, just kind of right in here, and we'll set a keyframe. So uh, let's come in at the very beginning of our shot because there's lots of heat distortion all throughout the shot, and we'll come in here and click the Distortion Mesh Offset Stopwatch. Then I'm going to scrub all the way to the end of the shot, and I'll pull this over a little bit just to kind of offset that. So it's kind of back down here on the corner, maybe pull it down a little bit. And it doesn't have to have that much movement to cause quite a bit of distortion movement. Um, so now, let's come in here and turn off our view mesh option. I'm going to hit the zero key and we'll watch that distortion happening across the shot. And you can be the judge if you feel like there's not enough movement or too much movement in that distortion mesh offset origination point. So if you think that it needs to move more, uh, you can move it over to the side more. But for me, I think that it actually looks pretty accurate. Now, one of the issues you may run into is that by pushing that distortion mesh over to the right, it looks like I'm getting a little bit of flickering here on my shot. So one thing I can do is scrub over to the point where I start to see that black line flicker. And then we'll grab our heat distortion, turn back on the view mesh, and you can use this tool, which is the uh, tool that's going to basically put everything back as it was. So by selecting that reconstruction tool, we turn down your brush size a little bit. You can come in here and just maybe paint along that edge. And then let's see if that looks odd. I think that's going to blend in okay, even though it creates a small line there. I think that's still going to work out okay for us. So we'll turn back off the mesh. Yeah, that looks fine. And then 
we've got some nice heat distortion over here in the area that has so much fire and then this area over here is remaining unchanged now if you wanted to add some something like a mask maybe if you felt like the heat is getting too close over on the left all you would have to do is grab your pen tool and you would just want to kind of mask off the area that you feel like needs a little bit less distortion and then maybe add some feathering to that so we'll come in here to our mask and let's do about a hundred pixels of feather and it, so if you've gotten kind of over the edge adding that little mask will help now I did a pretty good job of staying in the area that I wanted to it doesn't really look like that is giving me too much trouble but over time you may find that if your heat distortion drifts too much using a mask will work just fine for you and you do want to make sure that it is set to add so that the effect is added inside of that you see that if I move this over it's only being distorted here on the right and not on the left so everything inside my box will be distorted um, if that's the way that I painted it so this heat distortion is looking really good I'm very happy with the way that that looks and in the next lesson I'm going to show you how to um, achieve two things we're going to start faking a little bit of depth of field um, but not to our overall shot just yet I want to come in here and actually blur a few of the parts that we've composited in here that really look a little bit too crisp to be this far back in the background so like these pieces are a lot more crisp looking than maybe the cracks in the sidewalk so we need to fix that so that everything still feels integrated so stick around and I will show you how to do that in the next lesson